Hi, everybody. We are live at AWS reInvent in Las Vegas. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon.org. You're watching theCUBE, Silicon Angle's premier live broadcast. We go out to the technology events and as uh, John Furrier likes to say, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, so being here at the AWS show, we were, we're going to talk to a lot of AWS uh, customers, uh, hear a lot about what they're doing uh, in, in this case around uh, analytics, data warehousing, and data integration. Uh, so for this segment, I'm joined by uh, two customers, Daniel Heacock, Senior Business Systems Analyst with ETIX, uh, and Adam Haynes, who's a data architect with Federated Sample. Welcome guys, thanks for uh, Thank joining you. us on theCUBE. Thanks. Uh, your first time, so we'll promise we'll make this as painless as possible. Um, so, so you guys have a couple things in common. We were talking beforehand. Um, some of the workflows are similar. You work, you're, you're using uh, Amazon Web Services Redshift uh, platform for data warehousing. Uh, you're using Attunity for some of the data integration to bring that in from your, uh, from your uh, operational transactional databases and using uh, a BI tool on top to kind of uh, tease out some of the insights from that data. But why don't we get started, Daniel. We'll start with you. Could you just tell us a little bit about ETIX, kind of what you guys do, and then uh, we'll just kind of get into the use cases and talk a little bit about how you guys came to use AWS and Attunity and some of the other technologies you're using. Sure, yeah. So the company I work for is ETIX. Um, we are a primary market ticketing company in the entertainment industry. Um, we provide uh, box office solutions to venues and venue owners, all types of uh, events, uh, casinos, fairs, festivals, pretty much you name it, we sell some tickets in that industry. Um, we, we provide a software solution that enables those uh, venue owners to engage their customers and sell tickets. Mm -hmm. So could kind of uh, you a competitor to something like Ticketmaster, the behemoth in the industry, and you're Definitely. trying to? Definitely, so Ticketmaster would be the behemoth in the industry, and we are, uh, we consider ourselves a smaller, sexier version uh, that uh, is more friendly to the customer. Uh, customer friendly, more agile, right. absolutely. Uh, so Adam, tell us a little bit about Federated Sample. Sure, uh, Federated Sample uh, is a technology company in the market research industry, and what we aim to do is add uh, an exchange layer between buyers and sellers. So we facilitate the transaction between when a buyer or a company like Coke would say, hey, we need to do a survey. Uh, we will negotiate pricing and route our respondents to their surveys. Quickly. Try to make that a more seamless process so they don't have to go out and find right. survey respondents right. or Everything's qualified. Manual. And right, right. Absolutely, got it. So, so let's talk a little bit about, let's start with AWS. So obviously we're here at reInvent, uh, big show, 9,000 people here. Um, so you guys, you know, we talk about Agile, we talk about uh, cloud enabling kind of innovation. Um, Adam, let's start with you. What, what kind of brought you to uh, AWS? I mean, you're using Redshift, um, and I think you mentioned you're all in the cloud. Right. Uh, just give us your impressions of the show and AWS and what that's meant for your business. Right, show's been great so far. Um, as to, uh, we were originally uh, on-premise entirely, uh, a data center out in California, um, and it just didn't meet our rapid growth. Uh, we're a smaller company, uh, startup, um, so it, we couldn't handle the growth, so we needed something more elastic, more agile. So we ended up moving our entire infrastructure into uh, Amazon uh, Web Services. So um, then we found that we had a need to actually perform analytics on that data, and that's when we started the transits into you know, Redshift. Mm -hmm. And so the idea being you're moving data from your transactional system, which is also on AWS, into Redshift. Um, so you're using Attunity for that, their Cloud Beam solution. Talk a little bit about that and, and you know, how that dif is differentiated from some of the other integration methods you could have chosen. Right, so we started with a more conventional integration method, uh, a homegrown solution to move our data from our production SQL server into Redshift. Uh, and it worked, but it was not optimal. It mm -hmm. didn't have all the bells and whistles, and uh, it was prone to uh, bad management being like, not many people could configure it and know how to use it. So then we saw Cloud Bean from Attunity and they offered a native solution using SQL Server replication that could tie into our native SQL Server and then push that data directly into Cloud Beam at a very fast rate. So moving that data from, from the SQL Server, uh, is it essentially a real-time replication so that yes. that's moving that data yeah. into Redshift so that your analysts can actually, right. when they're doing their uh, either reporting or doing some real ad hoc kind of queries, they can be confident they've got the most up-to-date data from your SQL Server right. transactional system. Right, yeah, nearly real-time and uh, just to put in perspective, the reports that we were running on our other system were taking you know, 10, 15 minutes to run and in Redshift we're running those same reports in Minutes, one, one, two minutes. Right, and, and if you're running those reports so quickly, you know the, the people sometimes forget when you're talking about um, you know real time or interactive queries and reporting, it's somewhat only as good as the data timeliness that you've got, that you've right. the, data, the timeliness of the data you've got in that database because if right. you're trying to make some real time decisions and you've got a, a right. lag of depending on the workload and your use case, even 15 minutes to an hour 
that right. could really impact your ability right. to make those decisions. Uh, so Adam, talk a little bit about your use case. Is it, is it a similar uh, cloud, <coughs> all cloud uh, um, architecture, or are you moving from, uh, I'm sorry, Daniel, moving from uh, on-premise to uh, So Redshift? we are actually working with an on-premise data center. Um, it's an Oracle database. Um, and uh, so we've uh, basically, we, we ran into two limitations. Uh, one regarding to our current reporting infrastructure, um, and then two, kind of our business intelligence capabilities. Um, and uh, so as an analyst, I've been kind of tasked with creating internal feedback loops within our organization as far as delivering certain types of KPIs and metrics to you know, uh, inform our, our different teams, our operations teams, our marketing teams. Um, so that has been one of the um, kind of BI uh, elements that we've been able to achieve because of the replication and the redshift. Um, and then the, the other is actually uh, making our reporting more, uh, I guess, comprehensive. We're able to run, uh, now that we're using Redshift, we're able to run reports that we were previously not be able to do to run on our um, on-premise transactional database. Mm -hmm. um, so really we just are uh, kind of embracing the power of Redshift and it's uh, enabling us in a lot of different types of ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're hearing a lot about Redshift at the show. It's the, uh, Amazon says it's the fastest growing service AWS has, has had from a revenue perspective uh, in its you know, six, seven year history. Um, so clearly there's a lot of power in that platform and it, and it removes a lot of the, the, the concerns around you having to manage that infrastructure, obviously. Um, but the performance, you know, that's, that's something I think when, when people are, have their own data centers, their own databases, tuning those for the type of performance you're looking for is going to be a challenge. Was that one of the um, drivers to kind of your move to Redshift? Oh, for sure. Um, the performance, uh, I, I'm trying to think of a good uh, example of a metric uh, to, to compare, but uh, it's, it basically enabled us to develop a product, or to develop products that would not have been possible mm -hmm. otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, there were certain, uh, I guess, uh, the, the ability to crunch data, like you said, in a specific time frame is very important for reporting purposes. And if you're not able to meet a certain time frame, then a certain type of report is just not going to be useful. So it's opening the door for new types of products within our organization. Mm -hmm. Well, let's dig into that a little bit, the, the different data types we're talking about. So you've got, um, at ETIX, you, you're talking about customer transactions, you're, custom, are you talking about profiles of different types of customers. Tell us about some of the data sources that you're moving from your transactional system, which I think is an Oracle database, to, uh, to Redshift. And then, you know, what are some of those types of analytic workloads? What, what kind of insights are you looking for? Sure, so, uh, you know, we're in the business of selling tickets. And so one of our, uh, you know, main concerns, uh, or, or I guess you should, I should say we're in the business of helping our customers sell tickets. Mm -hmm. And so we're always trying to figure out ways to uh, improve their marketing efforts. And so marketing segmentation is one of the uh, huge ones. Um, appending data from large data services in order to get customer demographic information um, is something that is, um, you know, easy to do in Redshift. Um, and so we're, we're able to use that information, transaction information, customer information to, I guess, better engage our fans. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and likewise, Adam, could you maybe walk us through kind of a use case? Maybe, you know, types of data you're looking at, right. that you're moving into Redshift with Attunity, and then you know, what kind of uh, analytics are you doing on top of that? What kind of insights are you gathering? Right, so our, uh, our data is a little bit different than, than ticketing, but what we ultimately capture is, is uh, a respondent's answers to questions. So uh, we try to find the value in a particular set of answers. So we can uh, determine the quality of the supply that's sent from suppliers. So if they say that a person meets a certain demographic, that we can actually verify that that person meets that demographic, mm -hmm. and then we can actually help them improve their supply that they push down to their respondent to it. Everybody makes more money because the completion rates go up. Mm -hmm. So overall, just business and analysis on that type of information so that we can help our customers and help ourselves. Um, so I wonder if we could talk a little bit about uh, kind of the BI layer on top as well. I think you're both using Jaspersoft, but you know, Beyond that, um, you know, one of the topics we've been covering on theCUBE and other, uh, you know, Wikibon is this whole analytics for all movement. And we've been hearing about self-service business intelligence for mm -hmm. 20 plus years um, from some of the more incumbent vendors like Business Objects and Cognos and others. But really, I mean, if you look at a typical enterprise, business intelligence 
usage or, or adoption rate kind of stalls out by 18%, 20%. Um, talk about how you've seen this kind of industry evolve a little bit, maybe talk about JasperSoft specifically, but what are some of the things that you think have to happen or, or um, some of the types of tools that are needed to really make business intelligence more consumable for analysts and more just business users, people who are not necessarily trained in um, statistics or data scientists? Um, Adam, why don't we start yeah, with you? So, uh, yeah, so one of the things that we're doing is with our Jasper software, we're trying to figure out, uh, you know, certain, we have APIs and we have traditional, you know, client server applications, which ones our customers want to use the most, because we're trying to push everybody towards an API oriented. So we're trying to uh, put that data into Redshift with JasperSoft and kind of flip that data and look at it year to date or over a period of time to see where all of our money's coming from, where all is our revenue getting driven from. And our business users are now empowered with JasperSoft to do that themselves. They don't rely on us to pull data from them. They can just tie right into JasperSoft, grab the data they need for whatever period of time they want, and look at it in a nice, pretty chart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that a similar experience you're having at eTech? Uh, definitely, and uh, I think one of the things I should emphasize about our use of uh, JasperSoft, and basically, really, any uh, BI tool you choose to use in the Amazon platform um, is uh, just the ability to, to, to launch it uh, almost immediately mm -hmm. and be able to play with data um, mm -hmm within five, 10 minutes of uh, trying to launch it. So <laughs> yeah. It's pretty amazing what, uh, how quickly things can uh, come from uh, just a thought into action, so. Well, that's, that's a good point, because I mean, you think about not just business intelligence, but the whole data warehousing world, it was, you know, the traditional method is you, you know, the business user or business unit goes to IT, they say, here are some of the requirements, some of the, the, the metrics we want in these reports. IT then kind of goes away and builds it, comes back six months later, 12 months later, here you go, here's the report, and next thing you know, the business doesn't even remember what they asked for, this isn't necessarily going to serve our needs anymore, and you've just, essentially, it's not a particularly useful model. Um, and Amazon really helps you kind of shorten that time frame significantly, it sounds like, uh, between what you can do with Redshift and some of their other database products and whatever BI tool you choose to use. Is that kind of how you see this uh, evolving? Oh, definitely, um, and the, the options, uh, I guess the, the kind of plug and play, uh, workflow is is pretty pretty amazing, and, and it's uh, it's given us the flexibility in our organization to be able to say, well, we'll we can use this tool for now, and there's a there's a chance we may decide there's something different in the mm -hmm. future that we want to use and plug in in its place, and we're confident that that product will be there whenever the you know whenever the need is there. Right. Well, that's, that's the other thing. You can you can start to use a tool, and if it doesn't meet your need, you can stop using it, move to another right, tool. Right. So I think that puts uh, you know vendors like Jaspersoft and others, puts them on their toes. They've got to continually innovate and make their product useful. Otherwise, you know, they know that you know, their AWS customers can simply press a button, stop using it, just press another button, stop, start using another tool. So right. um, I think it's, it's good in that sense. Uh, but kind of, you know, when you talk about cloud, and especially around data, you get questions around privacy, about data ownership. Who owns the data? If it's in Amazon's cloud, it's your data, but you know, it's on their, in their data centers. Uh, how do you feel about that, Adam? Is there uh, any concerns around either privacy or data ownership uh, when it comes to using uh, the cloud? I mean, you guys are all in in the cloud, so. Right, yeah, so we've uh, isolated a lot of our data into virtual private clouds. Mm -hmm. um, so with that segment of the network, uh, we feel much more comfortable putting our data in a public space, because mm -hmm. uh, we do feel like it's uh, secure enough for our type of data. Mm -hmm. So that was a, one of the major concerns up front, but uh, you know, after talking with Amazon and going through the whole process of migrating to it, we kind of uh, feel way more comfortable with that. Can you expand on that a little bit? So you've got a, a private instance essentially in Amazon's cloud? Right, right. So, no, so we have a uh, private subnet, so it's a segmented piece of their network that's just for us. Okay. So we're not, you can't access this publicly, uh, mm -hmm. only within uh, our VPN client or within our infrastructure itself. Okay. So we're, we're segmented, we're away from the, everybody else. Interesting. So. Uh, they offer that kind of type of service when there's more privacy concerns oh, and definitely. security concerns. Definitely. Um, and of course, a lot depends on the type of data. I mean, how sensitive that data is. If it's right. you know, if it's personally identifiable data, obviously it's going to be more sensitive than if right. it's just uh, general market data that anyone could right. potentially access. Um, uh, Daniel, did, did talk about your concerns around that, or did you have concerns? Definitely. And, and, and um, is I that mean, more of a, a, a governance? people process question than a technology question, I think. Well, it's maybe definitely, a little bit about. definitely a technology question to a certain extent. I mean, as a, as a transaction-based business, we are obviously very concerned with security, and our CTO is very 
adamant about that. Um, and so that was one of the, the first, uh, first issues that we addressed whenever we decided to go this route. And um, obviously, AWS has, uh, has taken all the precautions. Um, we have a very similar setup mm -hmm. um, to what Adam is describing as far as our security. Uh, we are very much confident that it is uh, a very robust solution. Mm -hmm. Um, so, looking forward, uh, how do you see your use of uh, both the cloud and kind of analytics evolving? Um, you know, one of the things we've been covering a lot is the as, as use cases get more complex, you kind of you've got to orchestrate more data flows. Um, you've got to move data from more places. Um, you mentioned you know you're using Attunity to do some of that uh, replication from your transactional database into Redshift. Um, you know, what are some of the other potential data integration challenges you, you, see, you see yourselves facing as you kind of potentially get more complex deployments, you've got more data, maybe you start using more services on Amazon. Um, how do you look to tackle some of those data integration challenges? Let me start. Um, that's a good question. Uh, one of the things we're trying to do inside of you know, our organization is, I guess, bring data from all the different sources that we have together. Um, we have, you know, we, we use Salesforce for our sales team. Um, we collect information from MailChimp, uh, from our digital marketing agency, that, um, that we, we'd like to tie all that information together. Um, and so that's something we're, we're working on. Uh, Attunity has been a great help there, and uh, their, uh, you know, their, their product development as far as their uh, capabilities of bringing in information from other uh, sources is growing. So that's... Uh, you know, we're, we're confident that the uh, demand is there and that the, uh, the product will develop as we, uh, as we move forward. Well, I mean, it's interesting that we've got, uh, you know, you two gentlemen up here, one with a kind of a on-premise to cloud deployment and one all in the cloud. So um, clearly, Attunity can kind of gap both those, uh, right. the, the, the on-premise and cloud world, but also works in the cloud environment. Um, Adam, why don't we, if you could uh, talk a little bit about how you see this kind of evolving as you get more complex, maybe bring in more systems. Look, are you looking to bring in more data sources? Uh, maybe even third-party data sources, outside data sources. How are you? How do you look at this evolving? Right. In your so uh, presently, we, we do have a uh, Mongo database. So we have other sources that we're doing now. Um, there's talks of even trying to stick that in DynamoDB, which is a red, red, uh, Amazon offering, and that ties directly into Redshift. So we could load that data directly into that using that key pair or however we want to use that type of data data mark. Um, but one of the things that we're trying to work out right now is just. Uh, Distribution and, and you know being agile, you know elasticity. We're trying to work those issues with our our growing database. So mm -hmm. so our database grows rather large each month. So working on scalability is our primary focus. But other data sources. So we're looking at other database technologies that we can leverage in addition to SQL Server mm -hmm. to help distribute that load. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've got time just for one more question. I wonder, um, I always like to ask when we get customers and users on if you can give some advice to other practitioners who are watching. So I mean, if you can give one piece of advice to somebody who might be in your position, they're looking, maybe they've got an on-premise data warehouse, or maybe they're just trying to figure out a way to, to get, make better use of their data. I mean, what would be the one thing? Would it be a technology piece of advice maybe? You know, look to something like Redshift or in, in, in solutions like Attunity, would maybe it would be more of a, um, you know, a cultural, question around uh, the use of data and that mindset of making data-driven decisions, what would that kind of one piece of advice be, if I could put you on the spot? Okay, um, I would say don't try to do it yourself when the experts have done it for you. Um, I couldn't put it any more simpler than that. Very succinct, but uh, <laughs> very powerful. How about uh, for me, my biggest takeaway would be just Redshift. Uh, I was kind of apprehensive to use it at first, because uh, I was so used to other technologies, but. We can do so much with Redshift now at you know half the cost. So uh, use pretty, what works. Pretty compelling. All right, right fantastic. <laughs> well, Adam Haynes, Daniel Heacock, thank you so much for joining us on the Cube. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest. We're live here at AWS Reinvent in Las Vegas. You're watching the Cube.